We are taking more images at the moment than at any other time in the whole history of photography because it is so accessible these days, isn't it? Nearly every single one of those images is viewed electronically as opposed to being printed as they once were. And this is great because you can share an image with someone on the other side of the world in almost the blink of an eye. It's just the click of a button, isn't it? But as manufacturers are bringing in more and more megapixels into cameras, so image file size is increasing. Now this is great for printing pictures because you've got a really great quality image file and then when you print it big and stick it on the wall, it looks fantastic. But as that file size has got big, so it becomes a bit of a problem if you want to email the photos of little Johnny's birthday party to Auntie Edna on the other side of the world. Because there are limits set by email providers as to the size of an attachment you can attach to an email. Sometimes they won't arrive at all if it's a particularly large image file. If you're going to send 10 pictures, you may have to send 10 individual emails, one after the other, and that's a bit of a pain, isn't it? If you're uploading to a social networking site, this is less of an issue because they have optimizers at their end, which will take your image and resize it so that it displays easily and quickly at the correct size on the internet. However, they're not necessarily the best way of optimizing an image. There is no substitute for doing it yourself in Photoshop because as you reduce the size of an image, you're reducing the quality of the image and very often you lose a bit of sharpness. So it's a good idea to do it yourself. There are little tweaks you can do along the way to really optimize the size so it loads quickly, but also to make sure you still maintain that sharpness. So let's have a little look at where you go about doing it in Photoshop. <clears throat> this picture here of Layla giggling at a bit of seaweed is just the sort of thing you might want to send to somebody. If I just drag windows across into the frame here, you can see that that image file is a 12 and a half, almost 12 and a half megapixel files, uh, sorry, megabyte file size. That's a pretty big file size. Currently, <coughs> Google's maximum size, I think, is 25 megabytes. So that means you could only send two images on one email. So how would you go about reducing that file size? <coughs> well, it's pretty simple. Pop into the image menu and go to image size. And in here, we've got this little top box here, which is pixel dimensions. This is how the screen is measured. A screen is measured in pixels, not in inches. This screen of mine, this monitor, is about 1200 pixels wide. As you can see, this image is 4,288 pixels wide. So it's many times bigger, four times bigger than the actual screen itself. So therefore you don't need all those pixels. The bottom area of the palette here, document size, this is to do with print resolution, if you're going to get a print made. <clears throat> I'm not going to go on at length about the measurements, but this little piece here is particularly of interest. 240 pixels per inch resolution is what it's showing. And that is the kind of resolution you need if you're going to make a print. But the internet and your monitor only display at 72 pixels per inch. So again, you don't need all that information for an image file that's going to be viewed electronically. Let's start there. <clears throat> Let's reduce the resolution to 72 dots per inch. Up the top here, next to pixel dimensions, you may be able to see that unpacked, this JPEG image was 34.9 megabytes in size. Just by reducing the resolution, it's now only 3.14 megabytes. So that's much, much smaller. The width has reduced as well from 5,000 down to 1,286. But again, you don't necessarily need it to be that big. So let's reduce that down a little bit more. Make it 1,000 pixels. <coughs> Three zeros, that's better. Now I'm doing this width because that's the long edge of this image. If your image was the other way up, if it was a portrait shaped image, so it's upright, then make it the height that's a thousand pixels and that will give you a really good size to view on a monitor. Let's just have a look here and it's now 1.9 megabytes which is much much smaller. We'll click OK and there we go. It suddenly pings down to this little piddly thumbnail here. If you go into the view menu and click on actual pixels now you're seeing it as it actually is. These are the pixels. So if I just make that a bit bigger, you can see that on this monitor, 
that's a pretty good size to view the image, isn't it? It doesn't really need to be any bigger than that if you're just sending it to someone to look at or uploading it onto Facebook or something. What you may not be able to see in this video is that the sharpness has gone out of the image just a little tiny bit. So how do we put it back? If you go into the filter menu and drop down to sharpen, there are various different sharpening options available. One which is usually enough and just one click solution is sharpen edges. If I just click sharpen edges. Now I can see here in real life that that has just sharpened the image up a little bit. It's cleaned it up enough that it's probably okay. If you look in the seaweed area here in particular, if I just go over onto my other monitor and click between the two and undo it, can you see the sharpness coming into the seaweed? Because that's where it's most noticeable. It's a little bit soft and fuzzy there. When I bring in the sharpen edges, it's much sharper. <clears throat> Another way of doing it, if I just undo that sharpen edges, and this depends on which version of Photoshop you have, go into the sharpen menu and there's one here called Smart Sharpen. This is a really great one and it gives you a lot more control than the one click sharpen edges. At the moment I've got it set on 32, I'm not going to talk about all these other controls you don't need to know for this, it's just so simple. If I click the preview I don't know if you can see it, I'm just trying to move this around so that it still fits in the monitor. Uh, preview. I don't know if you can see Layla's face changing. That's just nice. It's got a nice level of sharpness. It's just losing the sort of softness that was in there. If I just boost that up a bit to show you what I mean, this will kind of overdo it, but it means you'll be able to see how the preview works. So that's as it was after resizing, and that's with the sharpness applied. Now you can see that sharpness is much too much. When we brought it back to about 30 something, yeah, it's about right, about 36, that looks pretty good. Let's just check it. Yep, you can just see that sharpening just dropping into it. Click OK. Now our image is lovely and sharp, it's just right, it's going to look brilliant when it's viewed by someone at the other end. <coughs> and hoping that Facebook's um, you know, optimizers at the other end don't mess it up. And they don't usually if you do this, well, so I found, it will be absolutely fine. <clears throat> the next step is saving it. Now you could just save as, but Photoshop has another brilliant tool to help you make sure your image files are really, really small so they're easy to email, easy to upload. File menu, and there's a little one here called Save for Web and Devices. Click on that one. There are various options in this panel, and again, we're not going into all the different options because for this example, we just don't need to. So we're going to ignore those tools. The only one I'm going to say is make sure the hand tool's clicked <clears throat> because with the hand tool, you can drag the image around in these windows so that you can see the area of the picture you want to. If it doesn't look like this with four windows, then you may be on different settings up here. There's two up, so you can compare the original with another one. I'm going to put it on 4 up. <clears throat> so there's our original. If I click into this little window and over here, I want it to be a JPEG because that's what most people will look at. GIFs are no use for image files really. Use a JPEG if you're going to do this. I'm going to set maximum so it gives me the best quality in this window. I'm going to take it down a bit and go to very high. And just so we can have a look at the difference, I'm going to, well, that one's already set on low. So I'm going to leave it there. To me, looking at them, I can see no difference between the original and the one which is set on maximum, apart from the file size. Here it's showing that the original was 1.9 megabytes after we've reduced it, which is much, much smaller. But in the maximum best quality, using the Save for Web and Devices tool, it's now less than half of that. It's down to 613 kilobytes, and the two look almost exactly the same. At the very high setting, I'd say, well, again, there's probably not much to choose between those two, except that the file size has pretty much halved again. We're down, it's just over halved. We're down to 264. But on the really low quality one, that isn't brilliant. There's a lot of sort of, it's called JPEG noise. It's sort of almost like water ripples coming in, particularly around the seaweed here. But it's a tiny, tiny 55 kilobytes. The one I'm going to go with is the very high option because that looks absolutely fantastic. All we have to do then is click save. It will ask where we want to put it. So let's just pop it into 
Oh, my documents, my pictures. I'm going to make a folder and call it um, Layla. Sorry, Layla. And then open it up and just click save. And there you go. I suppose you've got 10 pictures. You can belt through those really pretty quickly and then they will all fit onto one email very, very easily. They'll upload to Facebook very, very easily. <clears throat> if you run a website or a blog of your own, having a large image file size is not a good idea because it will take a long time to load in. That's not going to be good for the user who's watching it because it's not a pleasant thing waiting for a picture to load up, particularly if you have a slower connection, if you live out in the sticks a bit like I do and you can't get a particularly fast internet connection. But also, Google looks at things such as how quickly your site loads and if it sees great big image files slowly clunking in, it will penalise you in its search results. So there's another great reason for optimising the images yourself. Very simple to do, very, very quick indeed. And to drop a little carrot in front of you, there are ways, if you have a lot of these to do, to let Photoshop do it automatically. But that is for a different film.